In this lecture, I just wanted to point out one uh, component of the healing phases that isn't discussed very much in the book, but you'll need to know in order to complete your projects um, or your assignments for this module. Uh, the book does a good job discussing the different phases of healing. Um, phase one is called the acute inflammatory phase. Phase two is the repair or proliferative phase, and then phase three is modeling or maturation phase. Now, while these phases take place and we try to categorize different characteristics of each phase, there's a timeline, um, but they overlap. So phase one um, isn't, doesn't distinctly end right before phase two begins. They tend to overlap. Um, but in general, that phase one is just lasting um, a couple days. And then phase two starts, um, those activities start to pick up in the days um, following that phase, so around three or four, but again, some of those characteristics overlap, and this phase then can last six weeks. And then phase three um, can actually start earlier than six weeks, so you might see these things taking place at a month post the injury, um, and then they can last several months um, depending on the injury. So again, the book does do a pretty good discussion of that. What I wanted to point out is um, activities in what we call the chronic phase one or somebody that has um, chronic inflammatory um, events. These are the things like um, the Achilles tendonitis or patellar tendonitis. So the activities or characteristics that are taking place are those that are seen in the inflammatory phase one. Um, but they just stay and they don't move through phase two and three and actually heal. So they, even though the timeline might be that the symptoms have been present for six or seven weeks, um, which if we just go by timeline and phases, that would put us in end of phase two or even into phase three, um, but they don't have the events, the physiological events taking place in phase three um, or that you would want to. So they're stuck in actually phase one, inflammatory phase, um, and it's because they continue to cause a microtrauma to take place. So let's say we have an Achilles tendonitis, and um, it's not really bad enough that the person can't walk, uh, so they continue to go out and run, and they cause little micro damage um, to the tendon, and then that becomes inflamed. And before it really heals again, um, the person is out running again. So there's this constant irritation, um, but not enough for it to continue um, into phase two. They just don't have enough chemical um, mediators to get those events um, out from phase two to take place. Um, so you'll find out later, and we talk about treatment with modalities, we'll take people that are in chronic inflammatory phase two, and we actually irritate them, and we try to get a really strong, reactive, acute um, response from the tissue. Um, so strong then that they send in more chemical um, mediators and then um, after several days then the healing process is able to continue into phase two and then hopefully phase three. Also of course you have to decrease the micro trauma that's taking place so the person is put on an active rest. But I wanted to point that out because as you go through this um, semester you'll have case studies and you have to identify whether the person is in a phase of healing um, one, two, or three, or chronic inflammatory. So chronic inflammatory again is it looks like they're in phase um, one of healing by the physiological response um, but they've been in there more than two days which is our timeline um, for phase one and they've been um, having this, these conditions or these characteristics take place for, for several weeks, and then we call it chronic inflammatory, and those are typical the chronic itises, tendonitis um, that we see in patients.